today, we have a powerful lesson and the Lord started out talking about something and um, he um, gave us something yesterday that was just, um, I think was just a mere um, introduction to some place he was taking me out of, you know, I feel good today. I don't know if it's because I got my hair done or what, but I just feel, I don't know, just, maybe they just washed the iniquity out of my head or something. I don't know, but I just, I just feel good today. I do. I do. I do. And maybe because it's Sabbath, the Fridays always do that for me. It's like, I look forward to spending time with God and, um, and uh, at least I'll be spending time with him this week looking halfway decent. But um, I'm telling you that there's, that there's nothing like serving the Lord. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord and, and, and all that he causes to happen for his believers and for all of us that choose to trust him, obey him, to do his will. I'm situated in my seat, to do his will. And we're going to go today to our lesson because that incubation thing took me down. When I got off of the show on yesterday, um, I couldn't let it go. I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Um, and um, I literally got up and I think I got a sandwich or something and uh, came back in here and sat back down and just started back to, to reading and, and, and ran across some things that were so powerful. And um, I want to use and I want to do something um, for the next uh, 28 days is very, very important. The next 28 days is very important. And I'll give you more information about that. But I want to use as a flagship scripture that I want you to put this somewhere where, where you could see it um, in your house, anywhere where you could see it. Um, that scripture that's in Isaiah 41. Um, I want you to put that, um, uh, that scripture uh, up somewhere where you read it and um, give me your word that you would that you would read Isaiah 41, that you would read Isaiah 41 all the way down to um, uh, uh, to the I'm sorry, all the way down to the. Um, To the 20th verse 1 through 20 I want you to make a commitment and I want you to type it on the screen Isaiah 41 1 through 20 that you would read that scripture every single day for the next 28 days and I'm gonna tell you why let it have a little bit of uh, reverb and I and, and, and I'll tell you why because that scripture testifies of without putting in detail that scripture testifies of everything that God is about to do for you. It, it flavors it with promise and it is a prophecy. And, and I told you, you know, um, when you begin to mature in God, you use prophecy from another place and you don't need a person to, to detail out your prophecy of what it is that God is saying to you. Uh, you can give me volume two because I have it all the way on 10 and I shouldn't. Um, it's reality, y'all. I couldn't throw no signs because she's behind the curtain. So, um, uh, just, just to take us, you know, through every little step of, you know, you're going to get a car, you're going to get a house, you're going to get a this. Because, you know, the Bible said we know in part. We know in part. And we prophesy in part. But you are the individual that knows all of the details of the prophecy. You're the only person, you and God, that will ever have the complete prophecy. And I'll give you an example of that. I had somebody years ago, maybe about 20 years ago, to come to our church and um, they were prophesying to me and they kind of knew of me. And um, I was believing God for something. And they called me out and they said, you know, um, they were familiar with our ministry as well. And they said, you know, Dr. Bynum, you know, God has a word for you. And, and he said, I, I, I see God giving me to give you a new vehicle. And he said, and I see that um, it's going to be like some kind of long vehicle. Um, I sense that you believe in God for, for a van, for your ministry. 
you know, and, and God getting ready to provide that for you. And um, you just need to praise God because God getting ready to give you um, a vehicle that's going to be able to see, you know, more than three or four people. And so I just kind of stood there and I kind of nodded my head because I was believing God for a limousine, not a van. <laughs> and sometimes people will prophesy to you out of their own emotions and they will prophesy to you according to what they think God wants you to have because they're prophesying from um, a soulish realm. They know of the mind of the spirit, but they don't know the details of the mind of the spirit. And when they're not sure about the details, then they gravitate to the only thing that they think is going to be uh, what God is saying for you. But God wasn't saying a van. He was saying a limousine. And the Lord eventually blessed me to pay cash for a limousine. And I got the limousine. And that's why I say we, the Bible said we know in part and we prophesy in part. Which means your dependency should never be on anybody to give you the fulfillment of the prophecy of God. Because you are the person that know the detail. And what you need to know is that God is, um, he has turned heaven in your direction. And that the Lord has spoken over you that it's your time. And because it is your time, you just need to know that God is giving you a nod from glory to say that I'm going to do this thing for you. And so when you get that nod from God indicating to you that he's about to do that for you, then you take a scripture like Isaiah 41. Am I teaching somebody something? And you blanket that scripture as a cover. Like on the bed, there's a sheet and there's a mattress and there's the inside of the pillow and there's the pillowcases and the, and, 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 and the pillows that are on the bed. But you put a blanket over the bed as a covering. And so Isaiah 41 becomes the covering. It becomes the assurance that God got you. And so then it's your responsibility to speak in the spirit realm the details of the prophecy. And sometimes God will send the prophet to come along and, and they will name one of two things that you have been praying about just to encourage you to know that the Lord has heard you and the Lord is confirming that he's heard you. And if he gave them and revealed to them that he's going to do that, then he's going to do all the rest. Did God just say something? Did I just help somebody right there with, with the spirit of prophecy? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is. So you're not... You're not a person that's always got me looking for a boy. I'm looking. And see, sometimes when God sees that, 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 that you, you are not willing to spend that quality time with him, you can run all you want to the people to prophesy to you, and they'll prophesy to the people that's sitting behind you, next to you, to the left of you, in front of you, and just totally miss you. Because God is, is, is um, he's checking you out. And he's seeing that you're looking uh, for what you're looking for from him. You're looking for... Uh, for that from a man and God is a jealous God and he said I want to be able to talk to you because I want you to be assured that it's me that's talking that's right that's right so the Lord began to take me in this scripture and he showed me some stuff yesterday that literally just blew me away about this incubation incubation he said that um, incubation, sorry, this word is housed in seven categories, seven categories. Next week, we are going to be on the power of incubation, and we're going through the categories next week. I can't let, because when I tell you this is, this thing unfolded into something that I, I was just sitting here shaking my head. I'm going to be honest with you. Incubation is referenced in seven different categories. Number one, it is referenced in science. It is referenced in technology, the arts, entertainment, religion, spirituality, and psychology. Science, technology, the arts, entertainment, religion, spirituality and psychology it says here what is 
Incubation. What is incubation? I said it yesterday, but it bears for me to say it again. What is incubation? Incubation is, it says, that incubation is when something has to be taken into a private place because of an endangerment of something dying for, from the lack of maturity. So incubation is the process of something being taken into, something being taken into a private chamber because there is an endangerment that something is about to die. Something is about to die. When something is about to die, then God, out of his mercy, has designed it so that not only is it spiritual, but it's biological, it's physical, it's, 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 it's religious, it's science, it's the arts. Whenever something is about to die, God has fixed it so that the word incubation is a part of our English dialect. He has given us a word and a process and a procedure that is to save that which is dying. God is something. Now, I keep telling y'all, I don't know who, why people don't want to serve the Lord. I, I don't know why, why they don't want to serve the Lord. Somebody said, well, that's Westwood. I don't care who it is, whoever thought of it. They had to get it from God. So incubation is to prevent death. It is to prevent something from dying. So when God is pulling me back, he's not punishing me. When the Lord is pulling me back, I want you to see something. He's not trying to torment me. He's not trying to um, hurt me. When there is a recall on a car, it's because somebody have realized, y'all listen to this. this, this is so powerful right here. Whenever there is a recall on a car, it's because something has been detected while the car was moving with another individual that something is mechanically incorrect about this car because one person have already experienced danger. Do you see how good God is? Do you see how good God is? Before God allow you to have the experience of danger and hurt, he will do a recall on you. And he will call you to the state of incubation. Are you hearing God? This right here is, it, it, I can't even, watch this. R recall, recall is to bring something back. Because there's a malfunction in it, mechanically. Recall is to bring something back before it is damaged. Before further damage is embarked upon that person's life, God will call a recall. And the recall is for the recall. Oh God, oh I hear him, I hear him. I hear him so clear. The recall is for the recall, which means I call you back to keep you from going into danger. And then I call you back into that place so that I can bring your mind into a recall, which is now I got to cause you to remember and we, I got to put you in a position where you can be still enough to come out of the chaos and to get you off by yourself so that I can call your spirit to call back up what I have said about you. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I may get up today. I may get up and run across this floor today. I want to call you back because I'm watching your behavior. I'm watching some things about you. And it is apparent 
by the chaos that's around you that you are permitting to stay around you that you have forgotten some things so before I allow you to to be further damaged before I allow you to get to the point that what my 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 promise and my prophecy and my destiny is for your life then I will recall you and I will hold you in that place until you can recall until you have the ability to bring back up in your spirit everything that God has spoken about you are you hearing that are you hearing that my God <laughs> somebody said go ahead and run <laughs> who is that <laughs> Jones Don said, go ahead and run. No, uh, uh, Minister Pamela, is that powerful? I see her said, my God, thank you. Through. Is that powerful, y'all? He loves us so much. But the enemy would have us to see that the recall is God ain't going to do it. The recall is, when is it going to happen? The recall is, I might as well give up because it don't seem like ain't nothing going on with me. And it's just like, I I'm, I'm just so hurt. Because see, the danger of a person that, 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 that doesn't know that this is the Lord that has recalled you. That this is the Lord that has chosen to protect his interests and to protect what he has put in you. The enemy will start making you look at other people and what they're doing and how fast they're going and what they got. Because he'll start you to comparing yourself to somebody else. And if you see them doing it now, oh God, I just felt that him all over my leg. If you see somebody doing it now, then they have reached destiny. But yours is yet to come. Are you hearing that? Things that are great takes longer. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Do you not know that when God was creating the heaven and the earth, let me tell y'all this. Do you not know when God was creating the heaven and the earth, that, 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 that right then and there when he created Adam and Eve and they fell in the garden. Y'all look at this. They needed a savior then. They, oh, they needed somebody to rescue them then. They needed somebody to resuscitate them then. But God didn't send Christ right then. Jesus didn't come in the earth right then. But God gave man an opportunity. He gave him an opportunity to practice. He gave him an opportunity by giving him the laws. By giving him the laws so that, so that God in hopeful, in, 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 in hopefulness that they would follow after me because they will recognize that I am God. But time after time after time after time after time after time, man began to fail God. But when did God release Jesus to come into the earth realm? When there was nobody else that can save them. When prophecy alone couldn't save them. When rituals alone couldn't save them. When the tabernacle alone could not keep them holy. Are y'all hearing what God is saying? He had to send somebody that would redeem them. And that took a while. That came down through the line of Judah. That came down to the root out of Jesse. David had to come first. Are you hearing me? There's a lot of things that have to come first. Before that which God has predestined to show up. And so the works of the enemy is to allow you to start becoming impatient. So that you can run off incomplete. And when there is something incomplete. Incomplete will send you back. You coming back. So you might as well stop now when you get the letter. When I get a letter in the mail about one of my vehicles that said there's been a recall. I stopped driving it. Oh my God. Lord Jesus. It's a crazy person that'll keep driving a car when they done sent you a letter saying there's something wrong with the steering wheel. Well, ain't nothing wrong with my steering wheel. I, I, they, they, it must be something wrong with everybody else still. But I'm, I'm just going to drive this anyway. So if you continue to drive after you've received the letter of recall, then the accident becomes your fault. We got to be careful about that because there's a lot of things that God is rolling back off of us as penalties that we suffered because when the recall button was sent, you kept driving. And now you done tow your junk up. And now God got to come back and reconstruct what you tow up 
as well as recondition you and put your mind back in destiny and at the same time giving you hope to believe that what God has predestined for you is going to come to pass. My God, this is something else, y'all. I don't even understand what y'all... Who I just want to run today. I'm telling you, running is in me today. You tell them I want to run. I want to run today. I want to run today. I want to run today. So, 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 so listen to this. Listen to this. Oh, God. What else is incubation? Incubation. Incubation. What else is incubation? Incubation is also oh, the process of developing something slowly without any perceptible outside signs. It is the process of developing something slowly without the perceptible outside sounds. What is perceptible? Without even showing the slightest movement or change of the state or the being, nothing is noticed. Good Lord, him. Ooh, I'm telling y'all, I'm about to, y'all gonna make me get up today. I'm, it, so, <coughs> so how do I know that God is working on my life? How do I know that God is working on my situation? God, I bullshitted it. How do I know that God is about to do something that is going to be awesome? Because there is no perceptible signs. I, I have been recalled. I am in incubation. And there is nothing on the outside that is perceptible. Which means there is not even the slightest movement. I don't see nothing going on. Don't nobody else see nothing going on. And that's where the trick of the enemy come. Because we don't see anything. We give up. And we think God is not working. But the greatest of things have been birthed out of incubation. God, are you seeing what God is saying to you? Incubation is necessary for the fulfillment of the promise. Good Lord Jesus. Incubation is necessary for the fulfillment of the promise. Incubation is necessary for the fulfillment of the promise. And how do I know that? Because I am being developed slowly. I am being developed slowly. Mine is not microwaved. Are y'all hearing me? Mine is not microwave. And I'm going to tell you the truth now. Well, well, well I, I just, I just you know, the Bible said God is doing a quick work. For those he's doing a quick work for. We're talking about you today. We're talking about your process. We're talking about the process of the whole thing coming into being. Yeah, God can do some quick things. Like, for example, if right now, right now, this is my tea. And I'm going to have my assistant to go heat up my tea. Give that to her and tell her to heat that up for me. I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to show you an example right now. Come get this. Come get this. I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about. Give it to her. Hurry up. <laughs> That's tea. That's tea. That's tea. She getting ready to go and heat up a cup of tea. Now, I want you to watch how quick this is going to happen. I want you to watch how quick this is going to happen. Because, yes, God, <clears throat> there are some things that God is doing. We're not talking about stuff. Are you hearing me? We're not talking about stuff. We're not talking about, uh, you know, a car, a house, this. We're talking about the shifting and the moving of your entire life into purpose. We're talking about every faculty of your being being put into, into purpose. We're not talking about stuff. Yeah, you can get a car. Yeah, you can get a house. But it's deeper than that. What God want to do is deeper than that. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Are you coming? Which door are you coming through? Pass me the tea. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. This is tea. 
It's been about a minute and a half since I gave this to her. I got the tea. And the tea is hot. But when I get through drinking this tea, it's going to be gone. And then if I want some more tea, she's going to have to make me some more tea. Are you hearing what I'm saying to y'all? Which means the tea is not my life. So that which is my life, that which is my life, I cannot, I cannot expect for God to give it to me quickly. Because my life is not an item. My life is an experience. My life is not an item. We're not trying to give me an item. We're trying to give me an experience. We're trying to give me a lifespan. We're trying to give my life an opportunity to leave my mark. Anybody can get tea. You ain't even got to be saved now to get a car. You ain't got to be holy to get a cup of tea. So things, things can always be given. Things can always be given. And if God don't give it to you, you can go and get it yourself. But the only person that can give you purpose and the only person that can give you your destiny is God. And God is refusing on every level to make that a quick work. When he got to, to Noah and told Noah that he was going to transform the entire world. Noah had to go for years and years and years and years prophesying this. It's going to rain. And he had to keep on bringing that up. You know why? Because what God was getting ready to use Noah to do was to bring about change in society. Noah was about to give birth to another culture. Y'all not listening. Are you listening? I can, I can take it further than that. Lazarus. Lazarus. When Lazarus first died, Jesus didn't jump up and go. Jesus did not jump up and go. And somebody said, well, he just waited because, you know, they said, you know, the body, you know, the spirit of man hover around the, you know, the, the body. And, and, and there's a possibility back in, in those days, you know, because they, 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 they operated in sorcery and all of that, that, you know, if you a person that, that, that operated in sorcery, you can call a person's spirit back to the body within three days. Well, Jesus waited for, but why? Not just so that they can get a wow, wow miracle. Not just so that they can say, oh, wow, did y'all see that? No, because the Bible said that when Jesus got there after the pass of the time, he waited because the life that he was going to call out of the grave, when he called Lazarus out of the grave, it wasn't just Lazarus that came. Uh, yet, no, listen to what I'm saying. This way, when he, no, he, Lazarus was the only one that came. Listen to what I'm saying. It wasn't just Lazarus that came. God showed me this himself. I did not read this. He revealed this to me. It wasn't just Lazarus that came out of that grave. What happened was when Lazarus was raised from the dead and Jesus called him back to life. The Bible said that day many of the Jews left their religion and started following Jesus. The bringing forth back of Lazarus' life started a new culture. It started a new movement. It caused people who were stuck in religion to now believe in Jesus. Are you hearing me? That is the purpose why God takes his time with your life and leaves you in incubation until the promise is fulfilled because of all of the people that are attached to your life, because of all the people that's going to have to believe God after they see what God has done for you. Are you hearing me? The pulling forth of your life is not just about you. It's about what God wants to do in the earth realm. Are y'all hearing God today? And that's not a quick work. And watch this. They said psychologically that when you are taking medicine, they said when you are taking medicine, that if you frown while you're taking the medicine, psychologically you're telling the body, I don't like this and I don't receive this. They said when you're working out, when you, you know, like when your legs and all that start burning, you start saying, ugh, that hurt. It makes the process longer. But when you're working out and, and, and that thing start burning, if you say in your mind, these are the ones I want right here. Because the reason why it's burning is because it's changing something. The reason why you hurt him because it's changing something. 
Man, is y'all hearing what God is saying? The reason why you're uncomfortable right now because he's changing some things and these are the ones that you want. Oh my God, you just don't want a prophecy. You just don't want somebody to prophesy over you and make you shout and run around the church. These are the pain, the, the, these are the birthing pains and the agony and the frustration that you need because you are in incubation. And what else does incubation mean? This is going to bless you. Incubation, a person or a bird or an animal is or a cell or an atom is put in incubation when there is a detection of a disease. And before the disease can show its first symptom they would take that animal or that bird or that child and put them in incubation to make that disease come out in a controlled way to the point that they won't rip the person's life and kill their life are you hearing God right now when God puts you in incubation it's because the spirit of the divine one the Bible said for the spirit of God searches the heart and the mind he knows what is the depth of the spirit and when God chooses to put you in incubation, it's because the Spirit of God have detected that there was something there. And before that thing show a symptom, i got to get that out of you. i got to put you in a safe place where I can command that thing to surface, where you can confront it and God can deliver you. And that will not be your hindrance when you get over in destiny. And therefore, God would not have a reason to recall you. Oh, are you hearing God today? Good Lord have mercy. Jesus, I'm telling you I want to run. I, I'm telling you I want to run today. I, I want to run today. I want to run today. So when he grabs a hold to you, you're listening today. You're watching today. He's talking to you. He's talking to you. Somebody said, well, I'm all right and I live. Say, no, no, that's arrogance. That's pride. If anybody that is on this telecast today, you're on this Facebook today, and you walk around and say, but I, I, I ain't, ain't no sin in my life. No, you cannot say that. Because the Bible said nobody knows the depth of their spirit. You don't know what's in your heart. You don't know out of your, the process of your life what spirits have attached themselves to you and entered in by way of another spirit. And God is saying, before I let the devil destroy you, I'm going to call you into incubation. And I'm going to head out of a On the spiritual side, the dictionary said this. I didn't say it. It said on the spiritual side that when you go into spiritual incubation, the dictionary said it is a place, a private place that you have been called to, to lay down and rest until you can hear from a divine place. Are y'all hearing that? When God calls you in the incubation, he's saying, while you're moving, there's some things you cannot hear. Why are you trying to be this and be that? There's something, there's some things about you that I want to bring correction to. There's some things about you that are weak, that I want to strengthen, that you don't see right now. You don't see up the road and around the corner, but I do. And because I can see up the road and around the corner, you got to rest and be still and ask me, not only Jesus, take the wheel, but take it and turn it and turn it in the direction that you would have me to go and not me trying to build myself up to be something that I'm not because there's a desire in me to be famous, to be noticed, to, to be extraordinary when God had not called me to that. Are you hearing me? Nothing that you try to do yourself will prosper if it is not the destiny of God. And you will find out sometimes that when God pulls you into incubation, he not only will he transform your spirit, deliver you from the disease, but God will call you to go in a whole nother different direction that you never thought your success was in. And there you will find success. There you will find peace. There you will find joy. There you will find purpose. And the wealth of the world will be set in your lap. Because you completed the process.